In this section, we're going to go through the installation of ESLint on Sublime Text 3. So specifically Sublime Text 3, Sublime Text 2, as far as I know, is not supported with ESLint. So this is all going to be for setup with ESLint 3. So unfortunately, ES or Sublime has a little bit of a hefty amount of setup here. So these are all the steps we have to go through. And yes, it is slightly painful. To be honest with you, this is the third time I've recorded this section. So <laughs> the last two times I made a tiny mistake. Hopefully no repeats this time. No repeats. We're going to get through this in one go. All right. So first we're, well, you know what? I don't know how much sense there is to talk about all this installation here. Basically getting ESLint set up with Sublime just involves installing a bunch of junk. Let's just get started on it and go through the process. So first we are going to install ESLint globally with NPM. So at my terminal, I'm inside my project directory and I'm going to install the ESLint command line tool. Okay, so the command line tool is what actually parses and validates our code. We will execute npm install dash g eslint. So this is going to install the eslint package globally as indicated by the dash g right here. This is going to take a little bit to run, so let's continue with the rest of the installation while that goes. The next thing we're going to do is install package control. Package control is a package manager for Sublime Text 3. So it's just something that's going to allow us to easily install other packages. To install package control 3, I'm going to open up my browser and I'm going to navigate to package control.io slash installation. Then once here, on the left hand side, we're going to go through the simple installation process, which really is pretty straightforward. I'm going to copy this big block of text right here, everything from the import statement to the right by at the bottom. So I'll hit Command C to copy it. Now I'll go back over to Sublime Text and I need to paste this into Sublime's console. So I'll go up to the View tab at the top. I'll click Show Console and then I will paste it all in here. Everything that we just copied. So the very last uh, token in here will be right by. Then I'll hit enter and this will install package control for us. Now I've already got package control installed so I am not really doing any additional installation here. You'll want to make sure that it just completes installing. It should only take a second or two. So next we've got our package control installed. We are going to install a configuration for ESLint with NPM. So this config part that we're about to do right here is all about this last half, oops, the last half on our diagram. Remember, we have some per project setup that we have to do. So what we're about to do is the per project setup. It's gonna be the actual configuration that tells ESLint, hey, when you parse the code and make sure it's valid, please use this set of rules to figure out what is going on. So back at my terminal, I'll take note, looks like ESLint is all done installing. We're going to install some configuration for ESLint. So we'll run npm install dash dash save dash dev ESLint config rally coding, like so. So ESLint dash config dash rally coding. So we'll hit enter and let this thing do its little installation. And then we'll keep working while that goes. Just installing that configuration inside of our project, you know, that set of rules isn't enough. We have to actually tell ESLint to make use of that set of, of, or that list of rules. So to tell ESLint to use that set of rules, we're gonna create a new configuration file inside of our root project directory. So inside of my root project directory, I'm gonna make a new file called .eslintrc, and I'll save it. So now I've got a new file inside my root project directory called .eslintrc, and it's completely empty. Inside of here, we're gonna put just a little bit of configuration. I'm gonna place a set of curly braces, and then inside the curly braces, I'll add in extends colon rally coding. So again, this tells ESLint, hey, we just installed a set of configuration for you please use the configuration called rally coding. Do take note that you must use uh, double quotes around each word here. So double quotes around extends 
and double co quotes around rally coding as well. All right, so just two more steps. We're almost there, almost there. Um, we have now added in our config with NPM. We have actually skipped to the bottom. We added in the config file to our project. So the last two things are to do are we're going to use the package control module that we just installed to install linter and eslint to sublime text. So back in side of our project, I'm going to install or use package control to install those two modules. First, I'll open up the command palette by pressing command shift P. And this opens up the command palette. So there's a list of all the things I can do with sublime text. I'm going to search for install and then click on the install package section. This will do a little bit of loading and then show me a list of all the different packages that I can install. First, we're going to look for sublime linter and I'll find the first result right here is just sublime linter. I will click it to install it. And there we go, nice and installed. And next I'll open up the command palette again with command shift P. I will click on install package again. And then this time around, we are going to look for sublime linter dash contrib dash eslint. So sublime linter dash contrib dash eslint. So here's the result right here and I'll click it to install it. And I'll click out that message right there. Okay, so last step, I'm going to close out Sublime Text entirely. So I just quit entirely from it and I'm going to start it back up. And I got my project uh, folder still open right here. So last thing we have to do is just test this out and make sure it works. I'm going to open up this index.ios.js file and I'm going to delete a semicolon here at the end and I'm going to save the file and you'll notice, yep, sure enough, I get this error message popping up. It says here, missing semicolon, the rule is semi. If you don't see the, this little red dot over here and you know the red square pop up, do make sure that you save the file and also try changing the line that your cursor is on. Uh, inside of Sublime Text, the linter is a little bit laggy and so it, sometimes it takes a second for it to realize, oh hey, you just fixed the error. So you'll notice that when I delete the semicolon, you know, we're waiting, we're waiting, oh, there's an error here. And then when I fix it, we're waiting, and okay, there it goes. Okay, so there is ESLint set up with Sublime Text. I know, not the easiest thing in the world to do. In the future now, whenever you want to use ESLint with Sublime Text, you can create this .eslintrc file right here, paste in this rule, and then make sure that you just run at the terminal that npm install dash dash save dev eslint config rally coding. That's all you have to do. So in the future, no more complicated setup. It's a one-time thing. Okay, so we've got eslint set up with Sublime Text. Let's continue in the next section.